Hello, I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York. Welcome to One to One. Each week, we address issues of timely and timeless concern with newsmakers and the journalists who report on them, with artists, scientists, educators, social scientists, government leaders. We meet each one one to one. I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Marcia Keyes, president of York College, to today's program. Her appointment in 2005 was a capstone in her long association with the City University, which began at Queensborough Community College. Welcome. Thank you. I'm really interested in the path that brought you from Jamaica West Indies to Jamaica Queens. It is a very interesting path, certainly, a path that so many people have taken. But just so you know, Cheryl, I started um, first on that path uh, by way of the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg, because mm -hmm. that's where I did my undergraduate work. In those days, when I was looking for education, it was quite common to come to Canada or to the United States. For Jamaicans. For Jamaicans right. or people from the Caribbean, especially okay. the English-speaking Caribbean, which is where I was from. Uh, and um, Canada was a natural place for me because it's a part of the Commonwealth. We were treated really almost as Canadians, if you will. Uh, the school fees were very affordable and the system is very compatible with our system. So I got entrance into the University of Manitoba. It was a three-year program, undergraduate program. I paid the same school fees that Canadians paid, which was very modest in those days. And so it started me on that career path. And what brought you to New York? Well, New York was a different matter. Uh, once I was complete, had completed my work in Canada, I moved from Winnipeg, the cold prairies, to yet another cold place, Toronto. But for some reason, Toronto didn't take on me. Mm -hmm. uh, this was the late 60s. Much was happening, of course, a lot of excitement, a lot of major things happening in New York. My sister lived in New York because she had gone to Howard. And by then, my mother had also come up to New York. And so New York was almost a natural sort of family path for me. It was either New York. I could have stayed in Canada to do my master's or to return home. And I decided at that time that I still wanted to continue a career path and an educational path. So I got entrance into Teachers College, and that brought me to New York. And you eventually got a PhD. I did get a PhD, really an EDD, a doctorate in education, also at Teachers College. It was a long, winding path. <laughs> <I> <laughs> Why education? Say. Because you were, your undergraduate major was English. Right. Why education? Well, it was, it was education because I wanted to be in the education field. I wanted to teach, really. And the degree at Columbia gives you a combination. It gives you some administrative work, some pedagogy, but it also balances it with your discipline. And my discipline was African-American literature. Really, I discovered African-American literature at Teachers College, quite frankly, because this is not what I was rooted in mm -hmm. uh, growing up. But once I had essentially established that I wanted to pursue that goal, I, uh, I found a professor at Teachers College who really was a breakthrough person. Who was so, a professor? This was Robert Bone. Okay. He's Robert Bone, now deceased, uh, was a longtime professor uh, there. He had gotten his Ph.D. from Yale and had done a seminal work, um, um, can't think of the title now, but a seminal work on African-American literature, the early years. And his teaching really sort of opened up the whole field to me, because really I had not studied it before, mm -hmm. I had barely read it before, and so this became my passion. That's interesting, because you and I got our master's degree at the same time, mm -hmm. yours in education, mine in English, mm -hmm. and I recall taking uh, some courses at mm -hmm. Teachers College. I think it was John Killens who was teaching a, a writing course there at the time, mm -hmm. but it, there, I know that there were African-American yeah. uh, literature courses Correct. there at that time. That's right. So you have worked pretty much exclusively at the City University. That is correct. Um, you, you taught English at Queensborough Community College, mm -hmm. and then you became a vice president at Bronx Community College. Mm -hmm. um, community colleges, as you know, are sometimes treated as a sort of stepchildren of higher education. Mm -hmm. um, what, but obviously, you feel that they, I assume you feel they play an important role. They play a significant role, certainly. First of all, the whole notion of the community college was to really broaden the access for people who were denied access to the senior colleges. And certainly within the city university system, which is a sort of access um, institution, 
Uh, community colleges nationwide, however, have done a couple of things. They've broadened the access for people who have uh, given them a second chance. And these may be students who are coming straight out of high school who might not have done as well as students who, uh, you know, completed their degree and the, the, completed their high school diplomas with a solid education they need. And so gives them the chance to do developmental work and remedial work. That's one level of access. And another level of access it is for individuals who need to retrain. Certainly, you think of the current economic climate. Right. Individuals who may be displaced because uh, their their jobs have gone ha, have been removed. They've so been they removed. have a real vocational. And focus. they have a vocational focus, absolutely. And then the other piece, uh, the other access place in a very significant way was for women, women who probably had taken the path of being mothers, being homemakers, and wanted to then, at a certain point, come into the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And this was a place for them. So community colleges have really played that important role in higher education and continue to play that role. One of the other pieces with the community college is that very often they may partner with an industry or in an emerging industry to provide what, what, what is considered just-in-time kind of training mm -hmm. that will move people into jobs. So you came to your college four years ago. Mm -hmm. um, paint a portrait for me of, of who your students are. Certainly. Um, and, and they're evolving, I must say. Um, but your college, as you know, is a senior college within the uh, City University. It is the uh, it's the youngest of the senior colleges. Is it really? We're just about 44 years old, okay. looking towards 50. Um, uh, we, we were developed um, to really provide a comprehensive kind of education. So we are very strong in the liberal arts and the humanities. We also offer uh, uh, professional training so that we have strong business programs and we have a very strong allied health component. So that's sort of, those are the three streams. Our students currently um, I would say roughly 65% African-American, uh, black, uh, you name it, uh, blacks of all sorts, uh, from the Caribbean, from right here in New York and Jamaica, from uh, Africa. That's one strong component. And indeed, uh, we benefit from being considered uh, a predominantly black uh, uh, serving uh, population through the federal guidelines so that there are certain things, certain kinds of uh, federal programs that we can benefit from. Oh, really? Okay. Similar, almost similar to the HBCUs, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that is a that is a status that we share currently with Medgar Evers. So that's one stream. A very strong and growing stream of students uh, really represent the Hispanic population. We're now at about 15 to 16 to 17 percent and growing. And we are attracting students not only from right there in the heart of Queens, but students who are able to come in from Brooklyn on, on the train, and also some students, a, a small number, but growing from nearby Nassau County. Uh, and, and some of that is really driven by the kind of programming that I mentioned earlier. Are your students overwhelmingly from Queens and Long Island? Well, uh, strongly from Queens, but also very strongly from Brooklyn. Oh, really? Well, yes, we attract, uh, because, you know, students can come in on the <laughs> J train or the E train, and they can come right into the heart of Jamaica, they can get okay. on that train, they can sit on that train for 40 minutes, and they're there. Transportation you know, makes a big Transportation difference. makes a very important difference. Of course, we also have um, a, a large campus, and we do provide parking at a cost. So, uh, but the transportation hub, uh, including the Long Island Railroad, is a very significant factor. How about so, immigrant students? You have a lot of oh, those. Oh, when I talk to you about these profiles, they include immigrant students. Uh, because, as you know, New York City and Queens is a hub of immigra immigrant activity. And so many of those students are first generation. Some are students who are immigrants themselves. Right. Right. And so, we're talking about, about 6,000 students? Is that the right number? We're actually up now. We're just under 7,000 okay. students. Right. Uh, we've been growing over the last few years, and we wonder just how much more we can grow. Now, I gather about 70% of your students are female. Uh, yeah, it's 6 to 5, 6 to 7%. Now, is yes. that 
is that a good thing? Obviously, it's a good thing for women to mm -hmm, be in college, mm -hmm. but is that a good thing on one hand? Is it not so good on the other hand But about what it says about, you know, what males are not Well, not okay. Doing? I mean, it, 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 How do you I do think, that? well, first of all, I think this is an endemic problem in higher education, right? This, this is not something that is uh, typical to York, uh, not even <laughs> typical to CUNY. Uh, some of the institutions around the nation, unless they have very strong football programs <laughs> or strong, um, uh, strong athletic programs, are finding that there is this imbalance, if mm -hmm. you will. Um, but it is an issue for us because we would like to educate men. What's going on? Do you have a sense of why this is? Well, uh, the, the pipeline is not there. Um, maybe there are, in the climate, in the economic climate that we're coming out of, not the one we're in today, there were opportunities, I believe, short-term opportunities that were very lucrative for both men and women. Men probably opted to go there to rather go to work. than to go yeah. to work where they could make fairly good livings, right, with a high school diploma and possibly to come back to school later. I suspect that with the current economic climate, we will see men coming back into the institutions mm -hmm. of, of higher education and doing a more long-term kind of planning about their education. But we see it as a problem. CUNY has seen it as a, as a problem. And as a result of that, um, three to four years ago, launched the Male Initiative Program and focused it on black men, quite now, frankly. Now, tell me what that, what that is all about. You okay. have a men's center... The, le, le, part, part, of the, part of the point of this, and it comes out of work that has been done for about 10 years by Edison Jackson, my colleague at Medgar Evers, he saw fit under his leadership because of the significant uh, distinction between enrollment of women and men to establish visibly and intentionally Medgar Evers as a place where men were welcome. And so he had a black male initiative. Mm -hmm. And so the university studied that work and decided to promulgate it across the university. So we do have a men's center. We do ha intentionally have a director. We intentionally go out to recruit in high schools. We have programs which focus on issues for men. For instance, our program led by Jonathan Quash has something called the barber shop. We don't call it a counseling session. Mm -hmm. But in effect, in the barber shop, which is held once a month, any kind of issue can be raised and issues can be addressed. Right. It's and a great if title. <laughs> and if it's a mental health issue, right, it can right. be addressed. If it's a social issue, it can be addressed. If it's an academic issue, it okay. can be addressed. But it is not called yeah. counseling, okay. for instance. Okay. It is an atmosphere that can be uh, men can feel comfortable, and they deal with their issues with guidance right. from professionals whether it's an academic professional, mm -hmm. an intellectual, whether it's a counseling professional, et cetera. So those are some of the kinds okay. of things that one Everything can do. Everything short of a shave and a haircut. <laughs> That's okay. correct. All right. That's correct. We're going to take a short break. We'll be back with more with Dr. Marcia Keys after the following message. Welcome back to One to One. I'm Cheryl McCarthy of the City University of New York, and I'm talking to Dr. Marcia Keyes, president of CUNY's York College in Jamaica, Queens. York is probably not as well known as some of the other, you know, uh, CUNY colleges, Queens, City College, Hunter, Brooklyn, Baruch even. Why, why do you think that is? Is that a geographical thing, or is it because you're younger, or? 
What do you well, think? I think there are a number of factors. Certainly, we're way younger than many of these other institutions. Again, I mentioned we're just 44 years old. And then we stand, if you will, in the shadow of an institution that's been around for such a long time, Queens College, a, a wonderful institution, a fine institution, or a very good neighbor. And, um, and so we have to emerge with, her, with our own identity. And I think, though, that at this time, York is emerging into its own identity. There, ha there has been, um, for some time at York, um, some uh, a, a sort of rotate, rotating leadership, if mm -hmm, you will. There mm -hmm. was a very strong president there that helped to build the infrastructure, um, Milt Basson, who retired back in the 1990s. And since that time, there have been a number of presidents, some permanent, some not permanent eight, nine, ten or so during that 15-year period, 15 period of time. And as a result of that, I think some of the, the strong identity could emer that could emerge didn't quite happen. So we've emerged out of that, I believe, and with the very strong assistance of the City University, we're carving our niche into leadership. We will never be a city college, we'll never be a Queens, and we don't want to be. But we do want to be known as a strong undergraduate institution mm -hmm. with a very strong thrust in the humanities and the sciences. We do very good science at, at, at York College. Many of our students go on to do PhDs and MDs. And that has been a sort of stream, a sort of minor stream not well known okay. around the institution. We have strong business getting stronger after a moment of lapse, if you will, and then the whole allied health. And I think as we sort of emerge strongly on allied health with our nursing program, with our medical lab technology program, with our BSMS in occupational therapy, with our physician's assistance program, and with our pharmaceutical science mm -hmm. program, York is going to begin to be more known. One and you also the, have a gerontology program. We have a gerontology program. So, you know, we are... What does that prepare people to do? Well, it prepares people <laughs> to work in nursing homes. It prepares people to work with the senior population in hospitals. It prepares people to work, for instance, whether it's in nutritional sorts of facilities. As my mother, for instance, uh, currently is in senior daycare. She goes three times a week to this particular place, spends about, well, she goes twice a week. She, uh, she should be going three times a week, but she wants to well, have one day to herself. She goes twice a, a week. She spends about five to six hours. And there are programs. There is a program of activities for her. Mm -hmm. So the, the kind of work that, could ha that happens there right. is the kind of work that we prepare students to do. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the nature of that gerontology program. And of course, as you know, we're all living longer. Uh, many of us want to live in our own homes. Sometimes that uh, kind of assistance can be provided at home versus outside right. of the home. Now you have an aviation management program, which intrigues me. Yes. Tell me about that. And this is a new program. And this this program. How old is it? How old is it? it, it it's three years old. Okay. It's three years old. About eight years in the making, but three years old. It all started when the Port Authority was building the air train facility. There was uh, uh, money given to York to develop an aviation institute. Uh, it was thought at that time, with um, Jamaica being a sort of airport village, we're smack in the middle, equidistant between JFK and LaGuardia, with the air train coming, with Jamaica, downtown Jamaica sort of developing, that there is sort of a, a vision of an, air, uh, an a airport village. It, it was thought that York College, as an institution of higher education, should do some work both in educating the community about what might be possible with regard to work, and then also establishing an aviation management program which would help individuals move out of the low-skilled, entry-level jobs into the more managerial jobs. Okay. We did not, of course... So out of, for instance, being a baggage handler to being That is else. correct. Okay. That is correct. And so the mm -hmm. aviation management program is precisely designed to do that. It was a little long in developing. We had to sort of get the institutional arms around it. Okay. You, you know how academia works, as it were. But now it is fully in place. Uh, in fact, we have 70 students enrolled. 
uh, this very week, to, uh, this, uh, this very day, about 10 of our students are in Atlanta at the Women in Aviation Conference. Mm -hmm. uh, last fall, they attended a major conference in Orlando, uh, the National Association of Aviation, Business and Aviation. Uh, we have good partnerships with both JetBlue and American Airlines, as well as the Port Authority, who gave us the first million dollars to support this project. And so aviation is a real sort of magnet, is, is turning into okay. a real magnet program for us. You are also starting, about to start, a degree program in journalism, um, which intrigues me, uh, both as a journalists, but also because these are perilous times for news organizations. They are disinvesting in a big way. So why at this particular point in time? Are you well, starting? Well, um, the idea came to us through someone who is very linked to journalism, uh, Professor Glenn Lewis, who is a part of our English department. And he also was a part of the formation, the advisory board, that formed the J School, uh, the master's program uh, that was launched a few years ago at, within CUNY. He thought it would be a good idea, given the fact of who we are and where we are, because there are many small neighborhood newspapers within Queens that it would be a good thing to move our minor in journalism to a bona fide journalism program. And so far, his bets seem to be turning out because we have very strong enrollment. Now, I think you're right that, you know, you know this business better than I do, but our pos uh, we feel as if we're well positioned to help students who are interested in this field get a solid education and be ready for whatever the market is out there. And, we, and nobody's really sure, but it's going to be something. It, there's yeah. going to be something. <laughs> you know, it could be very different from the way you and we I experience we journalism. Think so, right. But it's going to be something, and certainly we will stay nimble in being ready to prepare students for whatever the market may right, bear. Right. And that, I think, is part of really what is important in higher education. We've got to be nimble enough to be able to provide the good kind of skills and the good training. And of course, as you know, um, a journalism degree can take you elsewhere. <laughs> right. It doesn't necessarily lead you strictly into being on the beat and writing. It may right. take you into some other places. You, York also seems to have an extensive continuing education program. I was looking at some of the mm -hmm. listings, uh, you know, short, ex inexpensive programs with a vocational focus, mm -hmm. paralegal studies, real estate sales, wedding planning, how to start a travel agency, an import-export business. Right. Yeah, well, continuing education is, a, is seen by all institutions as the way you can really reach out to the community who may not need the kind of sustained effort. In fact, many of these individuals already have a bachelor's degree. They may have a master's degree. They may be doing this to start a new business. They may be doing this to really just expose themselves, expand themselves, or it, it may be utilitarian, or it may merely be um, improvement, continuing education. That's right. what it says. Right. So we really do believe that lifelong learning is a very important piece of what we do. And you should know, uh, Cheryl, that very often, we do surveys to our zip codes to find out what they need. Mm -hmm. And we work also with other partners. For instance, the YMCA is a major partner of ours. Uh -huh. And sometimes they will help us understand what is the need out there. On another level, we have a very good town gown relationships with our Greater Jamaica Development Corporation. And we have a small business development center. And they will do the kind of work, the kind of survey of small business to find out what do, what does, for instance, in this economic climate, what are the needs of the small business persons? And so we respond to that. And so the continuing education piece of our work is a very, very important piece at your college. How well prepared for college are the students that you're getting? They're getting better prepared. Are they? Yes, they're getting significantly better prepared. And some of this reason, Cheryl, is because we're also communicating to them what we're expecting. Uh, there was a time uh, when there was some lack of clarity about uh, 
just what your college was. Are we a community college? Are we a senior college? We've made it very clear in our communication that we're a senior college. We require a certain level of preparation. And in fact, under my, under my tenure, during my tenure, we have gently inched up our expectations of students so that, for instance, this coming fall, all of our students who come into your college must be at a 78 high school average and they must have a minimum 800 SAT, not a high number, but up to this time we did not have an SAT requirement, mm -hmm. so a minimum SAT requirement, and they must be able to pass all three CUNY tests, their writing, their math, and their reading, on the, at the first, uh, uh, on the first taking. Mm -hmm. So that is our standard. Then we will work with them from there. You've got, we've got one minute left, mm -hmm. in which time I want you to tell me what it, you, is your most, your proudest achievement so far at your college? Tough one to <laughs> pull one out of the hat, but why don't we just talk about the fact that we believe at York that we have reached out to our communities. We've reached out to our high schools so they understand who we are. We've reached out to the general community so that they too understand that we are really sort of setting ourselves on the goal to be on the move, as we say, to provide quality education and to really understand that as an institution of higher learning, we are responsive to the needs of the community. Um, last year, we got through our middle states with flying colors. That accreditation. Gives us, that's right. 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 So accreditation, accreditation, accreditation. Without that good, solid middle states accreditation, we can't move on. We got that done last year. It was a major test that the whole institution had to pass. We passed it, and now we can sort of build for the next 10 years. Okay. We're out of time. But I want to thank Dr. Marcia Keyes, president of York College, for joining me today. For the City University of New York and One to One, I'm Cheryl McCarthy.